Be silent, or let thy words be worth more than silence. Hello all, today we are going to talk a bit about philosophy, specifically some ancient Greek philosophers, Pythagoras and Democritus. We believe that it is necessary for you to know about them because all of our modern civilization is based on the philosophy of these ancient Greek philosophers. Let's start with Pythagoras. We are sure you would like it. We begin with these words of Pythagoras of Somas the son of a stone engraver. We know that you would like to know about Pythagoras because all of us have studied the Pythagoras theorem, whether willingly or unwillingly. But unfortunately, like Thales, none of his original writings have survived. Typical of these guys. Most of the information about his life and philosophy has been carried forward by other writers. Now get this. He was basically a mathematician but greatly discussed and influenced thoughts on ethics, metaphysics, music, politics, and of course, religion. He too reportedly had visited Egypt and learned the Egyptian language from Pharaoh Amasis II himself. Those knowledgeable ancient Egyptians again. Some historians even claim that he learned geometry as well from the Egyptians. The Pythagoras theorem says that the sum of two squares on the legs equals the area of the square on the hypotenuse. In other words, the sum of the squares on the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square on the side opposite the right angle. It may intrigue you why mathematics had been so important to all of these philosophers. The answer is, it is the language of the universe. From these ancient scholars to modern-day Newtonian and Einsteinian physics, it is clear that only through a mathematical expression one could understand the vastness of the universe and perhaps use it to our advantage, a thing which these ancient scholars knew very well. Now let's see some other aspects of Pythagoras. Do you know that he founded a school known as the semicircle? It was not as the schools of today. There will be debates on matters of public importance, lifestyle, politics, and much more. Imagine how one could be so versatile. Can you think of someone in today's life like that? Where one only specializes in one thing and even in that one thing, something particular in that specific skill or knowledge? One more great thing. Many of his students were women because he believed that philosophy ought to be taught to both men and women. Later in life, Pythagoras' teachings shifted to other areas like metempsychosis. It is a difficult word, but in simple words, it means that all souls are immortal. And basically after death, what happens is that uh, the soul transfers into another carrier.
He believed that the planets and stars move according to mathematical equations corresponding to musical notes and hence produce an inaudible symphony. Aristotle writes about him in his book as When Pythagoras was asked why humans exist, he said to observe the heavens. And he used to claim that he himself was an observer of nature and it was for the sake of this that he had passed over into life. Now let's come to the most interesting point of Pythagoras. He founded an entire new way of life. Pythagoranism. Sounds uh, strange? It is actually not. You may find some of these ideas even in the modern lifestyles. Like for example, it focuses on communal lifestyles where people would be admitted to a monastery to live after taking a vow or an oath. The members were bound to share all of their belongings with other members and live an ascetic life. Is that not a good thing? They would practice music together, believing that music is a purification of the soul just as medicine is a purification of the body. They would only take vegetarian diets, dance together, do morning walks and even exercise together. Above all, here comes a very interesting part, Pythagoreans were believed to be non-believers of the Greek god Apollo, or at least not very much devoted to it. Very interestingly, the teachings of Pythagoreanism were called symbols, and followers had to take a vow of silence not to reveal these to any outsider, and those who did not obey the laws would be expelled from the community and considered dead. Some of the teachings include prohibition of wearing woolen garments and always putting the right sandal on before the left. Now, are you thinking what we were thinking while researching this? That Pythagoras, apart from being a scholar and a philosopher, was given supernatural attributions and uh, maybe even worshipped as well. Let us talk about another important point that due to his ascetic lifestyle, Pythagoras did not believe in the constitutions of the city-states. In fact, he rejected all such propositions and in retaliation, a mob attacked his meeting place and set on fire by pro-democrats. Almost all of his followers were burned alive. Pythagoras did manage to escape with a couple of his followers, but even they were rejected sanctuary in any place and eventually died after 40 days of hunger. Terrible may have been the death of such a scholar, but his work was carried on by his followers and students, which not only influenced Greek philosophy later on, but also influenced early Christianity in the Middle Ages. Happiness resides not in possessions and not in gold. Happiness dwells in the soul. The philosophy of Democritus is believing in the cheerfulness of the soul. He also gave the ancient Artemis theory of matter, born about 2500 years from now to a rich family. He reportedly spent all of his wealth traveling and traveled to very distant places, with some even suggesting that he traveled as far as India and Ethiopia. Unfortunately, most of his work too did not survive and we only learned about him from philosophers like Aristotle, who himself was a natural philosopher. Democritus argued that there are two fundamentally different kinds of realities that make up the natural world. One of them is atoms and the other is void. 
even the word atom comes from the Greek word atomos, which means indivisible. His philosophy was very simple, believing that our reality is made up of those atoms which are different in numbers and various in size and shapes. They are solid, without gaps and indestructible. They move in infinite void, repelling one another as they collide or combine into clusters, making the objects that we see in the world. The implication? Our world and everything in it has formed from the collisions of atoms moving about in such a way, meaning that it may disintegrate in time. You understand what we mean? No wonder that he is considered the father of modern science. But uh, ironically, he was not liked by many of his contemporaries and uh, even disliked. Like for example, Plato disliked him and wished for his books to be burned. Aristotle liked him and often quoted him in his texts. Besides being a scholar on natural philosophy, he worked extensively on metaphysics. History of epistemology ethics and politics are also very interesting, arguing that the knowledge of truth is very complex because we perceive things from senses that are subjective. And since the senses of each individual makes different impressions of the same thing, we cannot judge truth simply from sensual data. So when you think about it, according to him, the truth can only be grasped through intellect for the truth being in an abyss. Plainly speaking, what he meant was that our impressions of things are not always identical. So, one cannot tell which impression is true or which is false. And it is obvious that uh, one impression could be as true as the other. So, all of this implies that either there is no truth or it is not evident to us. In times of information bombardment, does all of this sound relevant to modern day critique of rationality where it is difficult to distinguish and sometimes even find the thin line between truth and falsehood? Perhaps you find a relevance of Democritus' thought to postmodernist school of thought. Let us know in the comments. For the part of Democritus, he may look very modern to us in his beliefs about politics or on ethics. He was a lover of Athenian democracy, having said that, the wise man belongs to all countries, for the home of a great soul is the whole world. He emphasized very strongly that anger should be controlled and goodness and kindness in humans come through practice and patience and not as innate qualities. This is the point that we want to emphasize most strongly on because we all can relate to those instances where we are so angry that we just want to destroy whatever that is that made us angry, regardless of its position in our life or world. As a wise man once said that anger is punishing yourself for the mistake of someone else. Democritus was the kind of person that